Hey everyone, so I wanted to do a little video to show you this uh, new uh, feature that comes with the Dwarf uh, 2 and will be coming when the Dwarf 3 comes out, which is they've updated the app with an atlas. Now, this is a star atlas. It is currently in closed beta. Um, I've been playing around with it a little bit, but I wanted to sort of show you it working and give you guys sort of a, hey, this is sort of uh, what's coming up in the night sky in the next month or two. So, um, yeah, this is the um, beta version, and you can see here you can do this. Now you can also, I think if you hit the compass button, there we go, have it where you can actually move it in the sky um, and basically use it to see what you want to see as I'm moving in the sky here. Much more natural. Um, and this is good for if you're beginning, if you want to see, you know, hey, is there a tree or something in the way for the target that I want to image? Because um, it's updated real time where I'm located, and time, as you can see in the bottom, is 11.40, 14. And um, it goes like that. And it's really useful. Um, there are a few little blips and stuff in there, but uh, overall it works quite well. Now, here's where it's really nice. So I'm into the astro function, and right now I'm pointing at nothing. I'm going to hit focus and see if it's going to focus on something. I'm, it's just currently sitting on the table. So there may not be anything to focus, but uh, yeah, we're going to see if it kicks through uh, an autofocus. And then we're going to maybe point at something and maybe not have it just pointing in the middle of nowhere, which is kind of what we're doing. So I'm going to switch over to this. And I'm going to say, that's probably some stars there. Yeah, there are some stars. Oh, it's still focusing. Ha <laughs> ha. All right. And... We can see some stars, and I think that's... Oh, it's still focusing here. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have moved it. It's probably very upset at me right now. Yeah. It's probably like, hey, yeah, you moved the camera while we were doing the autofocus. So that's a quick note. But we're just going to get autofocus in here, and then we'll hit a target, and I'll show you how the Atlas works and how you can access it um, when you're actually using the camera, because this is actually a really nice upgrade from what they had originally, which was a list of uh, some common objects, but also then they had it where they upgrade the list. But, you know, for a lot of people who are starting new, they don't know where that is in the sky. So they were trying to image it behind trees, behind buildings, um, you know, that kind of thing. Or they're trying to image stuff that was like right on the horizon, which was not great. So we're going to get the autofocus here hopefully working. And then we're going to go and uh, see, oh, there we go. Boom. Awesome. So we're going to tap the focus button and done. And we're in astro mode. So we're going to go to function. And there's a bunch of functions here. But the one we're interested in right now is here, Atlas. Same thing as before. Um, there you go. And we're going to just scroll with my finger here because I know what I want. So there's Cygnus right here. And that's what's coming up. And there's a lot of good stuff in the Cygnus. Um, there is the North American Nebula. There's the Crescent Nebula right over here. Nope, I hit a star, um, which is Cadwell uh, 27. Oh, am I going to get it? Come on. There we go. Cadwell 27. And uh, yeah, um, as I said, there's a couple little glitches and boo-boos here still. Like this circle obviously is 90 degrees to where it probably should be, but it is centered on it. And uh, what I want to do, though... Um, because it'll take a while to image something like that, and it's still kind of low in the sky. If we go up higher, we eventually get to Vegas. We go higher, we get to Hercules, and we get to M13, which is the Hercules globular cluster. And the reason I want to image this one on target, because A, I know it's in the sky, uh, but also B, it's a really bright target. So we'll know immediately if we hit it or not. So it's going to say, yeah, point lens, which we did, because um, we did do that uh, autofocus. And now we're going to see if the uh, telescope is going to go through its calibration cycle. It only has to do this when it starts the imaging cycle for the night. Um, I'm just doing this as a quick test because uh, there are clouds coming in soon. But I was like, hey, it's clear. Um, the moon's not up too badly, so let's do it. And it's going to go through its calibration. So this is where it's going to take an image. It's going to move. It's going to take another image. It's going to take a third image. And using those three images, it's going to figure out exactly where it's pointing. You don't have to worry about level, et cetera, et cetera. Obviously, the more it is level, the better off it is. But again, this is the Dwarf 2 and the Dwarf 3 are designed for 
beginners that don't necessarily have um, all the skill sets that, you know, pros have to do all this stuff. So we're just waiting for it to go to the go to. It's saying successful. It's going to open there. And we have the globular cluster right there in the middle. Now, um, this is currently in the mode of, I think it's telling me I'm going to overexpose, but we're going to try this out anyway and see what comes out in 15 seconds. Again, it's a globular cluster, so it's very bright. Um, it's a lot of stars, basically highly densely compact. And after the first uh, 15 seconds, we should be able to see a nice picture. And there we go. We have the uh, M13, which is the Hercules uh, globular cluster. Obviously, there's an aspect of we're slightly overexposed. But it also probably would tell me that if I go to the uh, thing, this is probably pointing too high straight up. Um, and that's something that, uh, and I got a satellite strike on the second image there. Always fun. But yeah, so it works and it does well. Um, I think this is pointing almost straight up. So but let's uh, stop this because obviously um, it's working. But again, I want to show this Atlas function and we're going to go pick something. Yeah. Oh, maybe a little high in the sky. Um, and now I'm pointing at the ground. Okay. Yeah, so I was originally pointing all the way up here. And yeah, that is sort of within this circle right here. The second circle um, is, is difficult for them to do. Um, but if we go down here, we're going to go back to uh, Cygnus, which we had before. And we're going to go for the uh, this Cadwell that I had. And we're going to try this. Um Yes, I do. I do want to switch. And it's going to say, yes, point the camera. It's going to do its test. It's going to go and uh, start doing the processing. It takes a bit of time to do this, but if you're watching it out there in the dark, it's starting to rotate around. So it'll take about another, no, apparently 10 seconds or less than 10 seconds. And then it'll go here. And we're going to go and we're going to see it. And we're not going to see a lot right now as it's sort of stabilizing its tracking. And the reason for that is because this nebula has to be much darker. Now I'm gonna go back here, change the shutter up. Gain, I'm gonna leave it at about 40 or 50. Okay, we're just gonna go with that. Um, and we're gonna hit this button and it's gonna go. And I'm hoping this is gonna come out pretty quick because again, I wanna show that it actually did hit the target. And I only have about 6% power left on the uh, Dwarf 3 because I was using it for some birding uh, earlier. Well, I ended up running out of battery power, no surprise there. But I wanted to take a little intermission break while we uh, charge for some next night to say if this has convinced you so far to get the Dwarf 3, it is available in my affiliate links below. But also, please consider hitting the like and subscribe button. It does help me because apparently YouTube sometimes thinks my videos are not good if you don't do it. Thank you. Still wanted to show you some more of this uh, Atlas and the go-to capabilities of it because there are some definite quirks that you need to be aware of with the Dwarf 2 and I'm assuming with the Dwarf 3, although as beta versions improve, um, we're going to see this. So I'm going to go for the uh, Veil Nebula here. Now I can't fit the whole thing in, so I'm going to go for the Witch Broom, uh, which we're going to go to here. It's not that far off from where the camera was before, uh, but we always have to start with the camera for some reason pointing in the south position and then move up to the next target. So it's going to go through its go-to processing and then it's going to come up and give us an actual success. And ta-da! And that bright star in the center I know is uh, where the uh, witch broom is. So we can go through and process it and over time we're going to end up with kind of this image here. The actual veil is still very dim and there's a lot of stars here so a lot of process processing is going to have to be made in order to really pull this out and you can expect it to be on this target for like an hour or two or three or even better would be four in order to really pull it out um, in post processing as the nebulosity versus a very dense star field. Next I wanted to show you where the current system with the Atlas kind of falls apart. And this is not necessarily 100% dwarf's fault. I think a lot of telescopes would have this trouble, which is starting to image things lower in the night sky. And in particular, um, where I am partially obscured by trees. I'll show you a video in a second what I mean. 
but we're going to go for the Lagoon Nebula and the Trivet Nebula. They're both right here. We're going to try to nail them and see if we can get the dwarf to focus on the Trivet Nebula. And this is where we run to a little bit of a problem because these are partially obscure and they're really low in the night sky. The actual result ends up being this, where you can see the Trifid in the top there and you can almost see the Lagoon at the bottom, but it's got all these dark branches and everything because these were moving through the images as it sort of went between different trees. And I'll show you a little video here where you can definitely see that, uh, yeah, the trees and stuff got in the way really quickly as we pass from one tree to another tree. So something to keep in mind that this does have those limitations. Next, what I wanted to show you was sort of a concept of not everything in the night sky is going to show up really quickly and that you can actually take what the dwarf uh, two and what the dwarf three can produce and actually take what's put in produced in the telescope as a PNG file and go and process it later. And one of those objects is this North American nebula. Now looking at it here on the screen and as we allow it to stack and start processing, we're going to notice very quickly that we don't get a lot on the screen. This is because again, another faint nebulosity. As we go more and more into it, we can start seeing that that nebulosity starts getting pulled out. But even as a final picture out of the camera, it looks pretty good. But realistically, if we want to really pop, we do have to take it into like a uh, photo editing software and do a bunch of curve adjustments. I just did curve adjustments here and you can kind of get this final image, which of course, if I want to, I could produce an even better image and run through the whole restacking process, etc. But it gives you an idea of what you're actually able to do with about 10 minutes of imaging, even though, you know, if you're out there in the night sky and you're looking saying, eh, this is not the greatest, a lot of astrophotography and almost I'd say probably 75% of astrophotography that you see out there is processing. So it is useful to learn some processing steps um, as you uh, move forward with these things, but it's nice that this atlas is now available so you can actually start targeting some of those fainter objects in the night sky, uh, pick a star nearby, it'll target it, and then you can image it and you can end up with some absolutely wonderful uh, images of some very faint targets, which wasn't originally possible with the uh, original Atlas method because you actually had to type in the, uh, the exact coordinates and that was a bit of a pain. So very happy to see this improvement of the Atlas in the Dwarf 2 and Dwarf 3. If you do want to get your Dwarf 3, uh, feel free to uh, buy it with the affiliate link below. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.